Andrew Holland is with us, Chief Executive Officer, Eventus Alternate Strategies. Uh, Andrew, good to have you with us here. Thank you very much. You know, even without all of this geopolitical uh, bit of a upheaval, market here, as we left off last week, was looking a little weakish, right? Uh, even the U.S. market, and we were making this point on Friday morning, in the last 10 days, we've had uh, some uh, negative technical indicators, two bearish outside days in the U.S. in the last 10 days. So uh, even without Iran, Israel, etc., markets had kind of primed up a little bit. What's your sense near term, Andrew? Not near term, Prashant. It's, you know, I mean, if you think about it from that kind of, um, you know, the, the, the problems that we saw in the middle of March, the, the market uh, confidence came back. Uh, and we reached new highs. So, you know, I think um, it's, it's a little bit of uh, taking money off the table. Obviously, you know, the kind of geopolitical um, problems have, have increased in that time as well. Uh, and for the U.S., you know, it's it's even though you've said what you've said, it, it's, you know, given the, the kind of uh, data that's coming there for inflation or jobs uh, has been a, a lot, uh, you know, a lot uh, you know, stronger than expected and bond yields have risen. It's not really such a big fall, um, you know, for those markets, and 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 you're seeing the same in Europe as well. It's so it's not, um, you know, if, if anything, I would just say it's just just taking some money off, off the table, um, you know, given the events. But you know, given that it's just one one percent or one and a half percent falls, it's it's not uh, it's not significant. And I think on Friday, uh, apart from the geopolitical tensions, you had some of the bank earnings in the U.S. which disappointed. Uh, so obviously that had a, an impact on on the, on the sentiment as well, uh, but I do see futures are, are you know kind of slightly higher in the morning. So maybe the geopolitical tensions are, are, are just uh, hopefully will fade from here uh, after the uh, after the uh, events over the weekend. So I, I'm I'm still kind of not uh, getting overly kind of negative on on the market. Uh, I think you know the, these kind of corrections are are okay. I don't think there's anything to, to, to worry about from, from, from what I can see at the moment. All right, so there's nothing to worry about. These kind of corrections are perhaps par for the course, right, Andrew? So what do you do at a time like this? Do you just sit back, uh, you know, take a step back and just watch these events play out? Or do you use this dip? I mean, whatever it is, even if it's 2%, 3%, 5%, do you use it to get into the markets now? What's the best way to approach it? Yeah, everyone's been kind of wondering, you know, when when should we get in? What's the timing? Should we should we wait? Uh, and then these opportunities come along, and I think it's a good time to be kind of dipping back into the markets. Um, you know, we had a, a pretty good showing on Friday. If you think about the expectation that markets going to fall, so maybe it's the reverse of that. Market falls this morning and then recovers uh, uh, during the day. Um, and I, I would think if you if you like the themes that you you know you want to play for the next two to three years, these are the opportunities you get, uh, and just keep, continue to deploy money at this point. Mm. Hi Andrew, good morning, and good to see you in Nigel on this side. You know, I recall when we spoke a couple of months ago, you said you like the metals pack. You're a little bit optimistic out there because you said China could probably come out with some stimulus. They've done something on ground, but maybe not enough. Though the metal stocks have done very very well in the last three months or so. What's the view on metals at current reckoning? Yeah, well, obviously, you know, metals have uh, performed very well, and I think that will continue, particularly now that there's uh, obviously sanctions going against uh, Russia uh, going forward, and we'll see what the LME says, the London Metal Exchange. Uh, but that's obviously good for, you know, the likes of copper and aluminium uh, going forward. I still think, you know, maybe that the steel... Uh, whilst you'll you'll see price increases, I still still think there's overcapacity in China, so that could be you know the the, the way to play it would be more uh, you know kind of aluminium, copper uh, versus uh, steel at this point. Mm. All right, uh, so that's on the metal space and on steel. Uh, what's your view on how to approach IT now? The f we've just got TCS's earnings, but um, it's it's not as bad as what one would have perhaps feared earlier. The commentary was good, margins are good, deal wins are strong. But of course, there's so much changing in this sector, right, with generative AI, etc., taking center stage now. Uh, as an investor, how are you approaching it? So I thought the results were good, actually. Um, and, uh, you know, I think um, if you think about all the headwinds they have, I thought it was a, it was a, it was a, a, a very good set of results. Uh, and of course, they're going to be cautious because, you know, the U.S. is, is still in that recovery phase and it will take some time. But, you know, I think there's a bottoming out here for, for the IT sector. 
And I think, um, you know, we'll see what the other results are like. But uh, I think if, uh, if if TCS is a kind of, uh, you know, the bellwether for what we can, we, we can expect from other companies, then I, I think uh, I think you'll see a lot more interest towards this sector. So dipping our toes. And of course, if interest rates do fall in the U.S. at some point, I think that will be the extra tailwind for the sector. So um, you could wait for interest rates or you could say that the, the, the bottom's already here. I think the bottom's already here for the likes of, uh, you know, uh, looking at TCS's results, it looks as though the bottom's being made. Mm. You know, just a, a quick look. I mean, the market, uh, it's it's early, I mean, to actually look at market breadth in any significant way, but it's, of course, I mean, gives you a sense. It's all uh, uh, down. But volumes on the downside, if you just sort of uh, rank stocks which are down uh, by volumes, it's a pretty short list. Uh, so the, you know, Irda, Electra, NBCC, NLC India, and then you go down the list and volumes are lacking. Uh, although the gainers list is much shorter, I would say there, the list of volume-led gainers is much longer. So that gives you a sense that uh, that this is uh, there's still a fair bit of interest in specific names. Look at something like Ashiana Housing. There was re there were reports that Ashiana has been able to sell out a project, uh, I think, in the NCR region in 15 minutes flat. I mean, this is a, I think it was a luxury project. Uh, so Ashiana is coming up with large volumes, half a million shares there nearly coming through. You know, these chemical stocks had shown some signs of life last week. Jubilant in Greva is up, up about 3%, 3.5%, 4% right now. Uh, so we'll see. And of course, idea is, uh, is a fair bit of interest there as well, two, two and a third of a percent. Just kind of uh, investors trying to figure out whether post the FPO, the infusion, equity infusion from promoters, uh, you know, there's, there's money to be made here. Andrew, on idea, what's your view? If you have any thoughts. Um, I can't really speak on individual stocks, Prashant, but um, obviously, you know, if, if, I, if I take that, the funding goes through. Um, this is uh, this is good news for the whole sector, and I think uh, with the government there, I think it will it will likely go through as well. Um, and there, after the elections, I think you, you'll see start to see uh, tariff increases as well. So, I think um, uh, you know I think overall for the sectors, uh, probably poised for, for for an upturn from from where we are. Um, so this is, I think will give confidence to to uh, to investors in in. Uh, the players uh, in, in in the telecom market. So I, I think it's a, it's it's going to be good news. I don't see it as being bad news. Okay, all right, uh, uh, Andrew. What about uh, you know we have had Modi 1.0, Modi 2.0, and now we are preparing for Modi 3.0. What would be on your wish list? I mean, you know, what what more would you expect from this government? Well, the manifesto is not really kind of saying of any big bang reform, so it's more of the same from what I can I, I can I, I've read so far. Um, and and the themes, Nigel, are just not going to change, are they? I mean, you know, defence spending, renewable energy, uh, railways, uh, infrastructure. You know, those are the you know the kind of big um, you know the big in, uh, big spending the government's going to do, and that has multiplier effects across many different industries. And of course, those themes that we talked about before in terms of premiumization of uh, the beverage market, uh, leisure in terms of hotels and airlines, that's going to continue. And the ele electronic manufacturing sector as well. These have long runways of, of growth, uh, to my mind, over the next two to three years. So I only see that the government will enhance this um, and and, and uh, you know help uh, help in terms of whether it's spending on infrastructure or tourism um, or electronic manufacturing sector in terms of PLI. So I think you know all of those sectors I think will do very well. One of the other sectors that has done very well this year is autos, right? So Bajaj Auto, for example, is up over 30%. Similar is the case with many of these other names and electrification has been a great theme. Uh, you know, there's been a recovery once again in the rural markets as well. Um, if this dip extends itself in the market, would you recommend buying into any of the auto stocks? I think I'd, I'd, I'd probably look more at the auto components. I think um, I'm going to wait to see what Tesla comes out with, but I think that could have a, a good fill-up for the for, for the auto component sector going forward. Uh, I think that's the way I'd want to play autos at the moment. Um, I think a lot of it's in the price for, for the main players, so I think the auto components is where I'd be looking uh, to put more exposure at this at this point in time. All right, uh, Andrew, we'll leave it at that. Thanks a lot for joining in. I appreciate your thoughts here on CNBC TV 18 and have a great week.